Alright guys, I'm here back finally with another Fire Alarm video with my brand new System Sensor P2RL, uh, which is the red horn strobe that is mounted on a dual game plate. Um, so in the box we've got some documentation, we've got some screws, uh, which are going to be helpful down the road. Um, on he here, this is the uh, mounting plate, which has our wiring terminals, as well as um, uh, screw holes for different um, back boxes. So in this case, I'm going to be mounting it on a uh, dual gang, but it can go on a single gang. It looks like maybe it can even go on... Uh, a circular box, but I don't think that's the proper way of mounting it, so we won't use that. Um, but this is the red horn strobe. Uh, they have them now where they can be just for a single uh, gang back box, which this one is meant to be dual. Um, looks like a lot of companies are doing that. I know EST's always had those little skinny things. Um, and now Simplex did that with the newer True Alert ES, um, and now this it also has that option. So here is the actual alarm. Let's put that by that. Let's set that aside. Let's take a look. So uh, this is brand new. I don't normally buy brand new alarms. Uh, the only other one I bought that was brand new was my uh, True Alert. Um, here we've got a screw down there that I assume goes in there and that's probably the only one that actually locks it in so people can't just pull it off the wall. Um, on the back we have our candela setting which can be, I, I, I don't know, I know the lowest is 15 and the highest is whatever it goes to when I do this which is 185, that's bright, okay. <laughs> so we probably won't need it that bright. Um, and that there's the uh, tech specs about the alarm. And then up at the top here we have our uh, audio select. Um, it's the same kind of switch you'd see on like a module device for an adjustable thing, you just get a little, uh, flathead screwdriver in there and twist it to what you want it to be and your uh, different coding is over here so we've got temporal um, high and low uh, which is code 3 by the way uh, continuous high and low um, and then you've got this uh, higher pitched tone I believe or this other tone which is also has temporal high and low and continuous high and low so we'll kind of play around with that and give it a listen today Alright, so I've got the new device all hooked up. Um, hopefully uh, everything works well. I set up a system similar to what you might see on it. This is an older uh, system sensor head, I believe. Um, which I could tell you. It does. Pops off. Yeah, system sensor. Except. Hold on. My back box is loose, so hard to get on. Uh, we got the typical Potter panel, still with a battery trouble, per usual. And this is a NBG12 Alex um, that, due to the fact that I have a conventional panel, I removed the um, module and I put just the dry contacts in its place and remove the resistor. Um, <clears throat> so, without further ado, let's hear this alarm finally. Okay. Okay, there we go. 
because I don't have audible silence set up anymore. Well, first of all, it's a two-way alarm anyway. Second of all, audible silence is technically against code. So uh, I, w I just want to hear the other codings that the alarm does, and we will be right back. All right, so now it's set to uh, temporal 3 kilohertz. Um, and that's just for the fact that I don't care about doing continuous because it sounds the same, just continuous. Oh, I should reset the panel, shouldn't I? Or I can activate it with zone 2. Hold on. Again, smoke detector. Awful. Okay, um, what can I jump for that with? Let's use keys. Because that always works. Right, and I'm still holding a screwdriver in my hands. Awesome. Alright, and that is the P2RL.